Okay. All right, well, let's get to it. Let's talk about some math. The first real math video in this enormous series that's uh, about to come, come down the road here. So before we begin, uh, we're going to start talking about, this would be around a beginning algebra level right here. If you're not there yet, that's okay. I have some videos on pre-algebra. So if I get to talking about some of this stuff and you're like, ah, oh, <laughs> where'd that get from? That, that might be in like a pre-algebra level. And that's okay if you, if you want to go back and review some of that. So where we're going to start with this video series is we're going to start with uh, the assumption that you know how to do things like find a GCF, a greatest common factor. You know how to do things like add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. In this class, about this level, most teachers let you use a calculator, and that's fine. That's totally fine. We will be relying on some of that knowledge on how to do that when we start getting into variables, so that's kind of an important concept. So if you need some, some refreshers at any time through this course, don't forget that there is a pre-algebra video series that you can go and, and look up the topical videos for, and you're like, oh man, I really don't remember how to divide fractions. What's that thing called, the flippy dippy, that little thing, that reciprocal? Um, don't worry about it. Go back and, and look at it as you need to. Um, if you'd like to start there, then pause the video, go go watch some of those, and come on back. Where we're going to start right now is, is that with that assumption that you know how to add, subtract, multiply, divide fractions. You know what a GCF is. You've done like a factor tree, uh, prime factor decomposition. You've done some things like that. So if you've had a class um, that, that's similar to that, maybe talked about some terms, like like terms, maybe started combining them, even talked about some exponents at one point, you've probably had pre-algebra. If this is all foreign to you, go back and watch them. Where we're going to start today uh, with this lesson is the difference between expressions and equations. Um, this, this is something that's not super hard, but a lot of people get confused at all. They go, oh yeah, that's, that's an equation. We can go ahead and solve that. Um, we're going to start using some, some math vernacular accurately. We're, we're going to talk like we know what we're talking about. Hopefully we do know what we're talking about. So let's discuss that a little bit. We have these two math statements, uh, and they're similar. They're not the same thing, but they are similar. We have these things called math expressions, and we have these things called math equations. So what's the difference between them? Well, there's really one main difference. They can look identical, except for one thing, one little symbol, this equal sign. You see, math expressions, they don't have, they don't have equal signs. That, that means a lot, though. That means a lot. That means that without an equal sign, you can only evaluate them. Um, you can only manipulate them. You, you can do things like... Um, like plug numbers in, that's what evaluate means. Or, or you can factor, that's what manipulate, a form of manipulation. You can distribute, you can combine like terms. That's all great, but that's not solving. Solving means something very, very specific we'll get to in a minute. So with expressions, if you don't have an equal sign in your math statement, you do not have an equation. Most likely you have an expression. We do have things called inequalities we'll get to later, but for now we're going to leave them as expressions. Yeah, the big thing about them is you can't solve them. You can't tell me whether they're true or not. They just kind of are. We can work with them. They're important, but they're not equations. So let's take a math statement. Let's, uh, let's put an equal sign in there, just one of them. That makes a math statement, an expression, into an equation. So just put in an equal sign in there, this two-sided. Let's have you start talking about two sides here. So with an equal sign, you have two sides to this math statement. Well, that, that means a lot. That means that we can solve a math equation. What solving means is discovering through our mathematical operations what number and or numbers make a true statement here. You can't do that with expressions. You can't plug a number into an expression and say, oh, we solved it. Uh, you can give me an answer, but it's not something that creates a true statement Well, where some numbers would work and some numbers wouldn't, where some numbers would be false and some numbers would be true. That's what equations are. So let me give you some examples so we can kind of clear up anything that's vague. Um, the first thing, now remember what I told you if you watch the introduction videos here, I'm going to teach you as if you're my students. I'm going to be asking you questions. I expect you to think about them. I want you to really put some, some effort into this. Don't just sit there passively at home or wherever you're at. And, and, and not be part of this. Take part with me here. I'm, I'm not doing this for, for just funsies. I'm here because I really care about your education. Stick with this. Think about this. So if you were to classify that, what would you think? 
Would you say math expression, math equation? Well, what's it have? What's it not have? Does it have variables? Yeah, got some addition, plus two. The big question, does it have an equal sign? And, and the answer to that question is, well, if it does, you got yourself an equation. If it doesn't, you have yourself an expression. This right now, hopefully you came up with it. That's a math expression. X plus two, can we do anything with it? Well, we're not really to the point of combining like terms. We're not talking about that yet. Um, we would be talking maybe about distribution if it had parentheses. We can work with some of these guys, but we can't solve it. This is what I'm talking about as far as solving goes. If I say, uh, what's the answer? You go, what? Exactly. Because you, you can't tell me one number that makes this true. Sure, we can evaluate it. We can do things like, hey, uh, plug in 9. Yeah, no problem. Wait, what, by the way, where would you plug in 9? What do you think? Ooh, not really. I mean, that's, that's 2. It, that's, that number's a constant. We call that a constant because you can't change it. So the numbers that are given to you in an expression or an equation called constants, that word constant means unchanging. Uh, the word variable, variable, means that you can change it by, by evaluating, plugging in, substituting, whatever you want to call it, plugging in numbers, evaluating that. So if we're ever going to evaluate something, it just means plug numbers into the variable and or variables. So I say let's, let's evaluate with 9. Well, we can totally do that. Plug in 9 for the x, our x becomes 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. No problem. We can evaluate. We can't solve it. Could you plug in other numbers? Could you plug in negative 5? What would you get? Well, negative 5 plus 2, hopefully remembering the addition rule. Uh, you know, plus sign, the two different signs. You subtract, keep the sign of the bigger number. Hopefully you get negative 3 out of that one. Uh, use your calculator if you, if you have to, but we should start you know, you know, knowing some of those rules. If you don't, again, pre-algebra. So we have ourselves an expression. What do we do next? You go, well, you know, let's uh, let's just do let's do let's do that. As soon as we do that, as soon as we put that equal sign on the board, yeah, we've got an equation. And equally important with that equation, you can solve it. Notice the difference between this. When we had expressions, you can't tell me what number makes it true. Here, you totally can. You say, hey, what, what number, if I put it in for the variable, if I substitute that in there, would give me a true statement? You see, when we have equations, we get teeter-totters. Uh, what we have here are these two sides that they have to be equal. Whatever we do to one side, we're going to learn that we can do with the, with the other side. That's coming up in a, a next video. Um, but we have to make these things balanced. So if you were to think about this and say, well, what number is going to, can I plug that in there, that x, and make these two sides, the left side and the right side, equal to one another, well, it's, it's too bad. I mean, we can think about these, a lot of these equations in our heads, you'd get what? I mean, think about that for a second. What number could you plug in? Could you plug in more than one number and get a true statement? That's an interesting question. How many answers do you think that thing has? One, two, three, four answers? The only one I'm looking at is the number three. If I plug in four, I'm going to get something more than five. Two, something less than five. Three is the only answer for this equation. What we call that, now when we call something an answer to an equation, we get something called a solution. So we have these things called expressions, no equal signs. We've got these things called equations, they have equal signs. And the important thing about them is that we can solve them. We're going to get into solving techniques as we go through the, the course here, as we go through some more videos. I'm going to break it down very clearly for you. Right now, we're kind of doing this in our head and think, what number makes this work? Three. Why? Why three? Well, if I put three there, three plus two gives me five. Kind of a guess and check our way through it. That's the difference between expressions and equations. Expressions, you can't solve them. You can do things with them, but you can't solve them. Equations, you can. The only difference between them is what? What makes the difference between expressions and equations? Because you're going to be asked that. Like, what's the difference between them? Go, well, one's got an equal sign. That's about it. That's a difference in the symbology. Symbology, I'm making up words now. Um, the, the symbols of it. So you have an equal sign and equation. It means you can solve the equation. It's pretty much it. Let's try a couple more. Let's see. Let's see some uh, some differences here.
so if we take and we do x2, x2, x squared or, or x to the second power, um, if you've been exposed to exponents at all, the number that's a superscript above a variable or even a number, it's called an exponent. So we'd say x to the second power, x squared. Right off the bat, you can tell me, you should know at this point, expression or equation. That's what you should be thinking of right now. Is that an expression? Just x squared. Expression or equation. Well, does it have an equal sign? If it does, equation. If not, expression. Can't, here's the big question. Can you solve it? Let's, let's get the misconception out of your head that you can solve anything, okay? Solving means something specific. Finding one or two or how many solutions that make a true statement. It's different than evaluating. So when I ask you, can you solve that, you can't tell me what number makes a true statement. It's almost a nonsense thing for me to ask. Could you evaluate it? Could you plug in five? Sure. What would you get? Would you get 10? 25? Well, if we plugged in 5 here, if we evaluated that for 5, we'd have 5 to the second power. 5 times 5 would give you 25. Sure, we can evaluate it. As soon as we do this, we change the nature of it. We change it from being an expression, something we can't solve, to an equation, something we can solve. You go, okay, well, hey, that narrows down my answer or answers now. I'm not just going to think about any random number uh, that gives me whatever number to the second power. I'm thinking about what specific number or numbers when I squared them, give me 16. Think about it for a minute. Pause the video if you have to. Just think about it. Can you think of a number that gives you 16 when you square the number? If you, if you got one, awesome. Think about it harder. Can you give me two numbers? If the answer is no, think a little harder. Because right now, we should be knowing something about the power two. Whenever you take a number times itself, it's always going to give you a positive number. Think about that for a second. A positive times a positive gives you a positive, but so does a negative times a negative. So when we're thinking about the solutions here, you go, man, I, I know it's four. Hello, <laughs> that's four. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, four is a solution. What's the other solution, though? Because remember, we can take a number to the second power. It will give us a positive number. Can you think of another one? I can. I can give you two on that. If we take four to the second power, well, four squared, that's gonna be 16. Not to the fourth. But negative four times negative four is also positive 16. We get ourselves two solutions here. Now this is interesting. The previous example, well, we had a, we had a solution or sorry, we had an equation, and we only had one solution. That's the only number that's ever going to work in that particular equation. Here, we've got one equation, but we get two solutions. What the heck? How in the world can you tell? When are you going to get one answer? When are you going to get two answers? Well, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to tell you, this is the difference between having a linear equation and a quadratic equation, and we can, we can get higher powers in general, here's some, some kind of advanced math theory. If your variable, the largest power of the variable that's up there is one, you're gonna get one solution. So this little guy up here has a little hidden one that drives you nuts. You go, man, do I put it, do I not put it? That, that exponent's always there. We never really write the one. If you have a, an equation with the largest power of a variable being one, you're gonna get one answer, one solution, that's it. If you have a large power 2, you know what? You're going to get two answers. There are some exclusions to this, some special cases where we get a double of the same answer called a double root. That's, that's way down the road. Don't worry about it right now. But in general, hey, power 1, one answer. Power 2, two answers. Power 3, three answers in general. That's really kind of interesting. So, yeah, we can get two solutions to, to one equation if we have a power 2. Let's do one more. Think about this one. At this point, you probably really have it. You got this down, you go, yeah, I know what expressions are. So what do you think? Expression, equation. If you're thinking um, equation, hey, we don't have an equal sign. If you're thinking expression, great. What's your variable? Yeah, it's, it's just that y right there. So could you solve right now? If I said, hey, what's the answer for y? What's the solution? 
I can't do it, man. That's an expression. I can't do anything with this. They're not even like terms. Can't do anything. We'll talk about like terms a little bit later also. If you've had pre-algebra, it should be familiar to you. As soon as we do this, though, now we got an equation. The next, well, the next question to ask is, well, if you have an equation, can you solve it? What's the answer here? And, well, how about this one? How about this question? Think about this for a second. How many answers should we get here? Look at your variable. What's the power? The superscript, it's not even written. What's the power of your variable right now? Did you get one? Did you get two? Did you get three? Right here, right there. You got a power one. We should be expecting only one answer here. That's it. Do you get it? If you don't get it, if you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about, go back and, and, and look through the expressions again. Expressions, no equal sign. Just cover that up, you got yourself an expression. As soon as you put the equal sign, you got yourself an equation. You can't solve expressions, you can plug numbers in, you can solve equations. That's our main goal in this, this entire couple videos here, really. We're gonna have several videos on this. Uh, the exponent thing, if that's like, I don't, I don't get what you're talking about. If you don't see an exponent like you do right here, if you don't see that, you're going to get one answer. Okay, that would have a power of one. Since we don't see an exponent, we're going to get one answer. We're going to get a power of one. It's called a linear equation. So the next question would be, what, what is the answer? And notice the second thing. These start getting harder. Uh, you start going... I don't know, that was pretty darn easy, it was just three. That's somewhat not too bad. I mean, you can think about four squared, negative four, that was tricky. But this one, you're starting to have to think harder and harder and harder about it. If we do things like add more parts to that, more moving pieces, more parentheses, stuff that we'd have, fractions, goodness, they start getting more difficult. We're gonna have to find some new ways to do this if it gets much harder than this. Well, let's think about it. Maybe you've been thinking about it as I've been kind of rambling on here. Have you thought about the answer, uh, the solution, something that's going to make this particular math statement, this equation, true? We can guess and check our way through it. Hopefully, it's a whole number. If it's a fraction, we're kind of screwed because this technique doesn't work too good. Thinking about fractions is hard. So think about 2. Would 2 work? Would 2, remember that this is a multiplication. Uh, would 2 times 2 minus 1 be 5? It's four minus one gives us three. Let's go higher. Let's think about uh, three. Two times three. So if I put a three here for my y, two times three is six. Six minus one. Hey, got it. We got we got five there. What that tells us is that our one solution that we were finding. Remember, exponent tells you the number of solutions. One solution, two solutions, one solution. That one solution is three. Why? Well, because we have an equation and we can test it. Are the sides of that teeter-totter, that equation, are they equal? If I put three here, does it equal five, just like this side equals five? The answer is yes. That's the nature of expressions and equations, the differences between them, and the idea about a solution. So you've learned a couple things here. You've learned expressions don't have equal signs, you can't solve them. You learned that equations do have equal signs, we spent a whole lot of time figuring out how to solve them. You learned that the, the power is actually relevant. You're like, that, that means something as far as the number of solutions you're going to get. A solution is the answer to an equation. Right now we found them all in our head, but this, this gives you an idea that not all of them you can do that way. It, it, they start becoming more difficult. And so we're going to spend the next several videos figuring out some really, really good practices on how to solve equations. That's the idea. Hopefully at this point you understand the difference between expressions and equations. We'll see you for the next one.